What's up you guys, Solar Suron here and today I have a really interesting bike. Now this bike is very different from any other bike I've ever reviewed in many ways. It has a lot of features and things that I've never used or I guess I have seen them on other bikes but never used them personally myself. Uh, this is not a bike that I would particularly ride but I could see it having a great uh, use case for a lot of people that want something that's easier to get on and off of and has a lot of features to make it more compact and more portable. So if that's the type of bike you're looking for, then stay tuned for this review. Okay guys, so feast your eyes on this. Now, yes, I know, I know, it's a pink bike, okay? But like I said, if you're someone who's looking for a lower step over height, it's a folding e-bike. It is really cool in a way because it has front and rear racks, so you can put a lot of storage on there if you're looking for that. It has adjustable handlebars, so you can raise and lower these handlebars just by simply, you know, um, loosening that bracket there. And then you're also able to adjust the seat as well. So the seat has height adjustment, and it has something that, again, I've never used before, uh, but I have seen it on a lot of other bikes, is a built-in seat post uh, spring. So it has no rear suspension, but it does have a seat post shock that it comes with stock now the seat itself is actually really good quality and it's it's fairly supple and soft so it's a comfortable ride uh, i just got on this bike and rode it out here to this area i'm going to take it on a little ride around the lake here and kind of give you guys my thoughts on the bike but i wanted to go over some of the specs and features of this bike before we get started so like i said it is a folding bike and i'll show you how that folds up here shortly but before we do that i want to talk about a few of the main components it has a 52 volt battery system here. Uh, now this battery pack can be removed. It does have a handle right here in case you wanna take this out and charge it inside. Um, it also has a 750 watt motor in the rear. Now this has an 1125 watt peak, which is a little higher than a lot of the 750s that go up to a thousand. So it's got a little more power than you would kind of expect. It, again, it is a 52 volt battery system, not 48 volts. So there's a little bit more voltage on there as well. And it has 20 inch by three inch fat tires. So smaller than I'm used to using, I've ridden 20 inch fat tire bikes and I, with a four inch wide, and I've ridden 26 inch by four inch wide. I've never had the three inch wide. And it's interesting, it still feels relatively similar to the bigger tire bikes, except that it's a little lower because it's a 20 inch size, but you don't really notice much of the width difference being four inches versus three inches. It still feels like a fat tire bike. However, you're getting a little bit of extra, I think power in that rear wheel because it's a little bit lighter than a typical 20 inch by four inch wide wheel and tire. So you have the 52 volts, a little higher voltage than the 48, and you have a little bit smaller, lighter tire. So it definitely accelerates really quickly. The bike itself is 68 pounds, and it's about 85 pounds with the battery installed. So it's a pretty light bike overall. It does have integrated front headlights here that is attached to the rack. If you don't have the rack, you can mount it onto the front fork like normal. And it has a rear light that's integrated as well to the rear rack. Now it has your typical seven speed tourney derailleur here in the back. And it also has a really cool display. I've never seen a display like this. So you have your brakes and you have your typical bell. I do like this bell that has the, the kind of handle on it and not the one where you just flick the, the little um, dinger or whatever it's called that has a spring on it. I don't like that very much. I like this one that has kind of like a throttle type control there it just seems a lot more robust the grips are really soft and reasonable but you have a different type of um, I guess you could say pedal assist selector up and down they're like big buttons that go up and down and then you have your power button down here on the bottom and then you have these two side buttons here as well and those are used to select and to go through different things on the screen so I'm going to show you here now if I can by blocking some of the uh, light there uh, as we go through, you can shift between turning the light on and off. So when that is dim like that, it's actually for nighttime. And that turns the lights on. You press it again, it turns the lights off. You have your battery meter. You have your miles per hour. You have your pedal assist speed. You have your trip odometer. And if I press this other button here, it'll 
cycle through to your um, to your odometer and to your max speed. So I've only pedal assist out here for the most, or I'm sorry, I've only throttled out here for the most part. So I hit the top speed of about, it says 20 miles an hour is the top speed under throttle only, but I was able to hit 20.9, almost 21 miles an hour. I did not do any heavy, hard pedaling to see how fast it could go. It does say that it will pedal assist up to 28 miles per hour. So interestingly, like I said, with that 1125 watt maximum uh, peak output on the motor and the 52 volt system, it accelerates really quickly. I was surprised also it being a lighter bike. And then you have your average speed here. So 13.1 miles per hour average speed. So pretty cool. I like the way that this display looks. I've seen this on a recent review. Uh, Shoot the Shit actually had a, um, a motor goat that I believe he was taking out that had a very similar display. Um, so this one here is branded by Engwe, the company that makes this bike. However, uh, he had a very similar one. So I wonder if that's gonna be kind of the new style coming out. I really like the look of it. I like the brightness of it. Um, it, it just seems to be kind of, I don't know. It's, it's, it's very different than what I'm used to, but I like the way that it looks. Okay, and continuing on, it does have 180 millimeter mechanical brakes. They work really good so far. I haven't had any issues with them. And another feature that I really like, and I'll show you when I do the folding here, is that these pedals fold up by just simply pulling this metal bar right here, and then they lift up like that. Really cool. I actually wish all of my bikes did that so that I could get them closer to each other. Because a lot of times when I'm putting my bikes together to kind of put them away, the pedals are what are hitting you know, the frame and different parts of the bike. So having something like that seems really cool. And then the way that you take them out again when you're ready to use them is you just click them down. And it's a really sturdy, this is all metal here. And so this is a very sturdy, you know, the plastic uh, pedal itself on the outside is plastic, but this frame part of the pedal is all metal. So you pull this up and then that goes down and it gets out of the way. So really cool. I believe it can go both directions, up or down. So whichever way is more convenient for you. So that's part of the folding process along with the frame and with taking the handlebars down here. So now I'm gonna show you how to fold this bike up and what it looks like when it's completely folded down. So one of the first steps that you're gonna do is turn the bike off. You're gonna pull this lever here and then you just simply fold this down. Really easy, okay? So that handlebar goes down like that. Now the pedals, like I said, you just pull that little bar in on them and they'll fold in together to make it nice and thin. Okay, and then the final step is to make sure the pedals are out of the way and then you're gonna come and unlatch this right here. So you basically just move that latch open and then once you have that there, you're gonna support the back of the bike. I'm trying to do this with one hand, so it's a little difficult. And you're going to basically bring this around. And you're going to let that set just like that. Now, there is a little metal bar right there on the bottom that the bike actually sits on when you do this so that you don't have to have it sitting on any of the frame or anything like that. So you have your pedals folded, you have the bike folded, you have the handlebars down. So overall, it's a pretty small footprint. So you could put this in something like, you know, a apartment or inside of the house, if you don't have a lot of room or in a garage somewhere, uh, it takes up a lot less space, or you could throw it in the back of, you know, an SUV, or you could throw it in the back of something like, you know, a hatchback car where you have a little bit more room, you can lay it down. So it's a really great solution for people that want something that's more mobile and that can be put into a lot of different spaces. Uh, particularly myself, I'm not a fan of folding bikes because I don't necessarily need them to fold. But if you are that type of person who, you know, wants something like that, this is a great option. All right, now I'm gonna put the bike back together and we're gonna go ahead and take it out and give it a first initial ride. And I'm gonna give you my impressions and my thoughts on it. If you are interested in a bike like this right now, it is on sale, it is $799 for the Engwe L20 2.0. It's a Now 
Now mind you, I'm doing this one-handed, so just shows you that it's definitely something that can be done fairly easily by almost anybody if I can do it with one hand. And that's it, the bike is back together that quickly, okay? So it's two main latches and then the seat post, you can take the seat out. And like I said before, if you prefer, you can lift this latch up and put the seat up and down. That also gives you access to the battery, which I believe is the main purpose of that is to be able to slide this battery out. All right, so let's go take this bike out for a ride. So overall, riding the bike, it's got a ton of power for, you know, a 52 volt system. Very smooth riding. One thing I will note is that the motor is a little bit louder than I'm used to. Um, it makes kind of like a little whine. Not sure if you guys can hear that. Not too bad. I just wonder if it's, you know, because it has a little bit more power going through it than the usual 48 volt motors. It's very interesting having a sprung, spring loaded seat post. I've never had that before. It definitely takes out a lot of the bumps in the back. Now I'm gonna go ahead and see how fast this thing can go. We're at 27 miles an hour. I'm barely pedaling, getting a lot of ghost pedaling at this speed, but 27.5 miles an hour. But the thing is, uh, when you have a cadence sensor, you don't have to worry about ghost pedaling like you do if you have a torque sensor. Torque sensors, you're gonna need to be applying a lot of pressure in order to get that top speed and that power out of the motor. Whereas with the cadence sensor, it's gonna give you all the power, depending on what power level you're set to, right off the get-go, regardless of how hard you're pressing on those pedals. So you can kind of ghost pedal and just keep the pedals rotating and you can go full speed with it, which is really cool. Now this bike does have a maximum weight of 264 pounds of capacity, a weight capacity. So I wouldn't take this bike necessarily off-roading or jumping the bike anywhere. I feel like that would be kind of risky with the way the frame is built with that joint in the middle of the frame. Uh, if I was lighter, if I was under 200 pounds, I probably would be comfortable taking this bike and doing heavier off-roading and possibly small jumps and whatnot. But considering I'm 225 to 230 pounds, six foot three, I don't intend to take this bike any on any big jumps or any major off-roading. Trail riding and the dirt and ruts and things like that, I'm sure it can handle just fine. Uh, I did not have a chance to fully charge this battery to get the top speed, I think, out of the bike, but I was able to hit 27.5 miles an hour back there pretty easily. Now again, it is a 52 volt system, so you're gonna be able to hit that top speed pretty quickly with the amount of power it can put out of that motor at 1125 watts peak. Just gonna finish riding around the neighborhood. The brake's nice and quiet. Definitely stop the bike in time. We're gonna go ahead and just make a little loop here around the neighborhood. So yeah, I really love the bike overall. Everything about it is awesome for, uh, like I said, the family member that's gonna be riding this the most. She's really excited to have it. And I'm excited for her to have it um, to use when we go out on rides. Um, there is a little bit of noise coming out of that motor though. That's the only thing I will say that I've noticed that's different compared to any of the other bikes that I've had. It's nothing out of control, but it is noticeable. very uh controlled ride at you know 24 25 miles an hour no issue with the steering column um and the size of the tires i was a little nervous with the smaller tires the skinnier tires and the taller handlebar like this that it might be a little awkward for me at least from what i'm used to but it's not it actually goes really straight i can even take my hands off the wheel off the handlebars and have no problems with it balancing um, it's a very well balanced bike overall. It's definitely a low center of gravity on this frame with it being all towards the bottom closest to the road. So it seems like a really good comfortable on-road bike. So the power when you first start pedaling, it's nice the way it delivers it. It's not just all at once. Uh, it kind of brings it in slowly and ramps up, which is really nice. Again, for people who might not be comfortable riding electric bikes or 
they find them to be too big uh, you know, or they just aren't comfortable, they can't touch the ground. This is a great option. The step over height on this thing is really low. I'd say it's less than a foot off the ground to get the step over height. So it's a great option for those who are, you know, a little more hesitant to get into e-biking. And at the price at $7.99, you really can't go wrong. Now this bike does come in two other colors, black and sea green. The sea green looks really cool. I always prefer black. Unfortunately, they didn't have any in stock at the time. They only had this available for review. But like I said, I'm really excited because this style bike is gonna go perfectly. And uh, like I said, the family member I'm gonna be giving this to is really excited because she loves the color. She thinks that that's super cool that it looks like that and is excited. So like I said, I'm excited for them. Um, it's really a well-built bike for the money i mean for 800 dollars, it's incredible that you can get something with you know front shocks a 52 volt battery a 13 amp hour battery uh, it's got 75 newton meters of torque in the motor you have a spring loaded seat it all folds down you have a bell you have front and rear lights integrated with the battery so you never have to worry about the you know your battery lights dying like i used to have on all my old bikes I had a, you know, light that I bought off the internet and just kind of attached to the bike and I always had to constantly charge it. You know, it was USB chargeable, but you'd go out and you would never know what the battery level was and, you know, it gets dark, you put it on and all of a sudden the battery's dead. Now you don't have lights. So for safety reasons, I think having integrated front and rear lights is, is a must nowadays for bikes. Very interesting with this seat post. Like I said, I've never had a, a bike with a suspension seat post like that. It definitely takes the bumps out and softens the ride along with this nice plush soft seat here. I think that um, she's gonna be really happy riding this bike and feeling comfortable with it. So like I said, if you're in the market for a bike like this, it's a great option and a great price point. All right, well, that wraps up the uh, review for the Angway L20 2.0. Again, if you're interested in this e-bike, be sure to check the description box. I'll have a link in there to the website um, and take a look at it. Let me know if you decide to buy this bike or not and leave a comment below and let me know what you think of it. But until then, we'll see you on the next one.